Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a radical equation. We have x squared plus x minus 4 all over 2 equals x times the square root of x and we're going to be solving for x values and I'll be presenting more than one solution. Alright, let's start with the first one. First I'm going to cross multiply and then since radical is on one side I'm going to go ahead and square both sides. That's going to give me x to the fourth plus x squared plus 16 plus 2x cubed minus 8x squared minus 8x. If you use the formula for a trinomial squared and then this will be 4 times x squared times x which is 4x cubed. So let's go ahead and combine like terms. We get x to the fourth and then 2x cubed minus 4x cubed is going to give me negative 2x cubed. We have x squared minus 8x squared, which is a minus 7x squared. And then we have the minus 8x. And then finally, plus 16 equals 0. Awesome. This is a nice quartic, right? No, it's not very nice, but uh, it's still solvable. If there are any factors with integer coefficients, so this should be factorable into x squared plus ax plus b and x squared plus cx plus d but instead of d you can just write 16 over b to reduce the number of variables and you can kind of try to find abc from here this is going to give you a cubic equation which is kind of like the cubic resolvent right and if you know how to solve the cubic this should be nice and easy right but there's another way to approach it which is called known as i think ferrari's method and we can go ahead and actually get rid of the x cubed first. So this is how it works. I'm going to kind of give you the basics and then you can hopefully do the rest. I'm going to replace x with y plus 2 thirds. And the reason why I pick a plus 2 thirds is because of this number. I basically take the opposite and then actually that's supposed to be not over 3. It's supposed to be over 4. Sorry about that. x plus 2 over 4 which is y plus 1 half. The reason why I pick 2 fourths is because the opposite of negative 2 is positive and then I'm supposed to divide by the highest degree or the highest power, which is the degree, right? And then once you do that, the cubic term is going to disappear and once the cubic term disappears, you can kind of turn it into an expression where you can write the left hand side as, you know, x squared plus k squared. Notice that there is no... Uh, x cube on the left hand side and there won't be any x cube on the right hand side therefore you're just going to have you're just going to have a quadratic on the right hand side and then from here you basically deduce that okay this must be a perfect square because the left hand side is a perfect square and in order for this to be a perfect square its discriminant needs to be equal to zero make sense that's how we can proceed and hopefully go somewhere from there but i'm going to leave it to you and continue with the second method all right so here's our second method we start with this and then obviously we cross multiply let's take it from there right all right so here's what we're going to do obviously uh, we could uh, get away with this because this is kind of like a special type of equation makes sense uh, so here's how it is we're going to put everything on the same side this is going to be as a minus sign plus x and minus 4. Let me go ahead and put the 4 on the right hand side. So I added 4 subtracted 2x root x. Okay. Now why is this form helpful? Think about it. This is actually really nice because if you really think about it, the left hand side is a perfect square. Do you see it? You don't? Okay, fine. It's x minus square root of x squared. So it's kind of like a disguise a little bit. If I gave you the equation in this format, you'll probably get it easier, but I kind of disguise it a little bit, you know. Anyways, so now we have the following equation. Something squared equals 4. There are two cases. Either this is equal to 2 or this is equal to negative 2, right? There are two numbers whose square equals 4. Nice. Let's go ahead and proceed with each of these. Again, when it comes to solving this problem, there is different ways to do it. For example, you can go ahead and say, okay, I'm going to isolate the radical and then square both sides. And then I'll get to x that way, right? And this might be a feasible solution, especially our expression from here is going to be 
uh, factorable nicely, right? So you're gonna get x minus one and x minus four, which is cool. And the other approach is basically going off of a little differently and substituting square root of x, like replace it with something like t, then you get t squared minus t minus two equals zero. And obviously this is also factorable. And from here, you're just going to get t equals two and t equals negative one. Now the advantage of the second approach, sub approach, is basically uh, you don't get these extraneous solutions because from here you're gonna get x equals one and x equals four. But here, when t is two, when t is square root of x by the way, you immediately know that, okay, square root of x equals negative one is not gonna work because if x is real, that is not going to work. How about x being complex, right? Think about it. Uh, the square root of which number is negative one? And you might think of i maybe, right? Because this one of the square roots of i at least. Wait a minute, that's not true. The square root of negative one is i, but okay, here's the thing. This equation does not have any complex solutions either. Because if you think about it this way, like square both sides, you get x equals one, and obviously x equals one does not satisfy. Or does it? Well, if x is a complex number, it should satisfy because one of the square roots of one is a negative one. But the problem is you have to make sure that it satisfies the original problem too, all right? So anyways, something to think about. I'm going to leave that open and then look at the second scenario. With the second scenario, again, we can do the same thing and then square both sides. And from here we get x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals x and this gives us x squared plus 3x plus 4 equals 0. Now when you think about it, b squared minus 4ac is negative, therefore no real solutions, but guess what? We can get complex solutions. But guess, I'm gonna leave that for the other channel, which is A plus BI. We're gonna look at the complex solutions there. Let's go ahead and proceed with what we have. So we said, first of all, that X equals one is not gonna work. And you can actually test it here because if you plug it into here, one minus one does not equal two, right? You know that. Great, so X equals four seems to be the only real solution for this equation. Correct? Okay, let's check it out though, still, right? What if it, that doesn't work either? Well, it should work, but let's still check it out. So if x is equal to four, from here I'm getting 16 plus four minus four divided by two, that would be an eight. And on the right-hand side, four times, the square root of four is four times two, which is eight. So yes, both sides work. X equals four is definitely a valid, valid solution, right? Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the stuff that we can get from the graphs, yes. These two curves intersect at a single point, which is the real solution, the four, x equals four value. And obviously the complex solutions are also given and the plot is pretty good, doesn't it? Okay, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care and bye bye.